I wanted to go over my astro, astro photography setup. Now it's getting better and better. I used to have a Nikon D eight hundred E, which I could connect to this. The way it works basically is you get this T ring, which is this. This is a lot bigger for a certain reason with this camera to help the performance of uh, not reducing the line. I'll explain that in a second. So you have a T ring which basically is normally this size and that's the adapter so you'll have the mount for your camera or it's a Nikon Canon mount or a, an E-mount for the Sony that I use and then you may have a Barlow which helps with the, the attachment to the scope now this is an 8 inch uh, Celestron Next Star Evolution and I'll, I'll talk about this in a minute because it works really well with like a hands off solution you don't even need to be near the telescope to move it, to calibrate it, or even to take pictures, or to, to, to set up your pictures. So the way this works is, I'll, I'll show pictures of the camera, but on the the large sensor for the Sony, because it's 42 megapixel, the sensor is so large that you really don't want to restrict light. I have an accident my lighting. Yeah, the sensor's so large on the the Sony, the 42 megapixel AR, this A7 R2 Sony, that you really don't want to restrict light coming through this rear hole to a hit in the sensor. And the way all the attachments happen is that a lot of them, like the ones on my Nikon, I don't know if I actually have it close by. Yes, I do, it's here. You can see this was the actual barlow that fitted into the attachment ring of the Nikon. You can see the diameter difference of this. Okay, the sensor on the Nikon was 36 megapixels and it was a bit smaller in uh, the cross section of it. But you can see the massive difference there. So what this allows us to do is connect the camera. They supply a little clear filter on here, but you can get uh, special filters depending on the astrophotography you're doing. So that slots in there. And that basically slots into this adjustment tube. And what happens here is it keeps all the diameters, the inner, inner diameters as wide as possible. So the smallest actual diameter from inside of that is just as the it interfaces with the camera. So that's as, as wide as it can be. And I'll link to the company that makes this. It's quite expensive, I think it's about $120 for these two machinings. But they're both really high precision machinings. This, uh, outer ring that basically fastens onto the back of the camera uh, it has a little retaining ring in there like a compression ring so when you turn the thread it tightens up on the T adapter so that slots into there and I'll zoom in on this actually okay so I zoomed in a little here so we can see the the clear optics we have a little filter here it's quite nice it's, it's uh, completely transparent but it stops, uh, I, I leave this on all the time and it stops the dust going in. I say, I've just got this set up, so that's what I plan to do. So the inner diameter is, uh, I think the camera on the Sony A7R 2 is 42 mil. So this is a 48 mil adapter, so you can tell it's really uh, bigger than the internal diameter. It's trying to stay bigger than that 42 mil. Now the way this works is we have this outer ring, so it, it's keeping the connection outside of this outer diameter. So we've got this big outer ring with a, a compression ring on the inside so this will trap the T adapter so now with this when you attach this be super super careful because this is a, a permanent fixture of the back of the camera so you really don't want to mess this thread up it's going to be expensive to get that repaired so try and keep it as parallel as possible when you put this on it and it's quite a big diameter so it gives you a lot more force than you think it makes you uh, a little stronger on that thread than you want to be so try and keep it as powerful as possible and try and uh, stop and waggle every something just to make sure it's still free. And it should turn on there pretty easy. And uh, just really take time on that because messing that up could be expensive. And then this is a fantastic machine. I say I'll put a link to the guys that make this. It's quite expensive, but the fit is absolutely delightful. As an aerospace engineer, I kind of love this stuff. So that compression ring sits right within the uh, the recess on the T adapter. And then what I'll do here is uh, I'll, I'll switch the cameras because I'm recording on my say so now at the moment. Hopefully this is in focus because it's doing it all itself. And, uh, and I'll show you how that attaches. And then I'll go through the uh, how the camera is controlled 
and uh, uh, sorry, others. The telescope's controlled. That you can calibrate it. You can move it anywhere you want. The, the telescope can be outside, and that'll all work by Wi-Fi. Then you can switch to the live view on the Sony uh, A7R2, and you can control all your ISO and exposure. Obviously, you don't have any focus. Uh, the only focus available is right here on this guy. But generally, with the scope, I find you focus it once you set the camera up on this setting, and that's it. There's no more focusing to be done because obviously you're looking so far away at kind of an infin infinity. So you can set it up on, say, the moon and uh, generally don't really have to focus uh, much more. So that's the only thing you cannot do remotely. Everything else you can do on, on camera or inside the Celestron app. So I'll switch cameras, show you attaching this. So that's tightened up there, putting that ring. And then I'll loosen it off a little bit when I come to do the, put the camera on. And uh, you can spin it around, you can see there's a little red mark there. So you can line that up with the white mark on your camera in the A7R2 case. So I'll fit straight on there and be very careful again. You've got big diameters here. And with the big diameters, you've got more force, like leverage force. So you can do a lot of damage quite easily before you know it. You can straighten that up there, tiny it up. Now what's really great about the the A7 camera is over the Nikon that I used to use, when it was on there, it was so big that it would be very close to here. And if I'm looking at things uh, higher up, more vertical, or straight up from the ground, which when you're near a city, you kind of do more, I think, because the, the uh, if you're looking at a diagonal, you've got more refraction of light through the cloud and the lights were eliminated. So the straighter up you go, you'll get a little bit better uh, scenario. Hopefully there's things straight up. But if you do that on this scope, for instance, uh, with a camera on, you, on the Nikon, you can't see through the viewfinder, but on the Sony, you can just angle this. Like, it's brilliant. Like Generally, it'll be like this angle, and this is absolutely just perfect, so you can like that. But what I'm gonna show you is the couple of apps that I use, so I, I don't need to be by the scope. I can, uh, you got the focusing ring here, as long as you're in uh, focus, you can go away from the camera and play from the warmth of your home in the middle of winter when the skies are generally best here in Seattle uh, in the winter when it's not raining because it's nice and cold. So uh, yeah, we'll jump to the apps now and I'll show you those. Uh, if you're wondering how to light, what the light is, I've de well, designed, I've put together uh, using a, a really good white light, 56K uh, LED, a really, and a quite expensive one, it was about $80 for a square 100 watt LED. And I've just started to use that, so I'm going to use it in the future. And uh, so it's perfectly uh, dark here at the moment and bad light. But this uh, this light is brilliant. You just need a lot of heat sink with it. So I tried to make design it without a fan, so there's no noise ever for video. Yeah, it should be pretty good. And this is not even on full. So let's jump into the apps and have a look how that works. Okay, guys, this is the app. So do this quickly because you can see uh, a lot of videos on these specifically. So this is just regular Android, this is a Sony uh, Z1 tablet, it's quite dated now, it's a few generations old. And in here you can just go in and uh, you can see the SkyQ link, Wi-Fi is on there. You can enable the Wi-Fi on the scope in the menu using the, the manual controller. Uh, and then you can just fire up the app, the app's for free. Uh, and on here you can do connect to the line or just connect, so we'll just connect because we, we're inside so uh, we won't be able to see any stars, it's, it's, uh, it's quite bad, raining outside. So now this is connected to the to the app, directly to the scope. So here we can control the scope manually, we can move it around. And you can hear it in the background there moving. There we go. But also what we can do is you can align it in here, so you can point it at stars, you can, you know, you can do all the configuration for the scope. In the actual settings, there is uh, telescope settings as well. So you can go in here, you can change like the, the lighting on the scope. You can see that it's charging, discharging, whatever. You can play around with uh, the alignment, the how fast it moves, uh, and the external power because it's got USB plug in it. So you can plug uh, if you're on a remote location, say inside of a, a viewing spot, you could plug in your tablet into the actual scope because it's got quite a large uh, backup battery in there uh, so you can change the amps that uh, that USB is providing so if you're 
follow and hold tab below is uh, low amperage. You can turn that down or turn it up. Uh, so yeah, you can do all that. So you can set up a lot of options uh, for the scope in here, plus a lot of the other options for the habit. You can turn it into like red mode for night, so it's not lighting everything up. Uh, so pretty much you can search on any any uh, entity you want. Maybe a satellite, stars, the moon, you know, comets. And it'll lock in that and it'll even track it with a with a scope with a good uh, stepper motors. It tracks really well as well, so you can do long exposure. Not as good as having like a a, a, a slew to actually rotate with the with the earth, you know, to get really really long shots. But uh, it's pretty it's pretty good, and you can do all this remotely. And then uh, basically we can if you if you set up on what you want to do, you can. I say you could use this on a separate element, or uh, uh, you use it on a separate tablet or a phone or something, and you can just connect to your phone. Uh, actually, let me go into applications. To uh, we go to smart control and just stick it on there. It basically says, uh, you know, you can uh, then go into uh, play memories. There we go. So it comes up with uh, East a 7 r 2 That's my camera. Uh, it connects on there. So, uh, obviously, I've not got it attached to the attached to the scope because it just be seeing the it just be blurry in the ceiling but this and you can imagine this now attached to the scope we can uh, we can play with all the settings you can so that's like a focus you can double tap and it'll uh, that mouse might be too close it's trying its best we've got a, a long sighted but you can see that's pretty live and uh, what that is I'm trying to focus on that's my keyboard and in here you can play with all the settings, so you can go in and uh, oh, there we go, we're on preview mode. So we can click in here and you can see I want to change the ISO and drag this and go up to the silly 100,000 ISO and down to the 100, which is the lowest. And we can change the uh, stop. And you can see a lot of that real time as well. You can change the shutter speed. So you probably be on more long exposures here with the astrophotography. And then you can just take the picture. And it'll uh, I've got it on auto focus there, so it's refocuses and taking the shot, but you can set that as manual. Because it'd be pointless to have an auto on a on a telescope because there is no focus, it's only the manual not focus. So this preview now, it'll take the picture and then it'll send the picture back. It takes a while because the, this is a 42 megapixel camera, so obviously the pictures are quite huge. So that's the picture it just took. It'll preview for two seconds, but you can turn that preview off so it doesn't bother getting it. Or you can uh, you can make it longer so you can review it better. But I generally have to leave it off. And then here you have settings too. To, uh, so you got white balance and oh yeah, I can change my focus to manual in there. So you got MF for all the other focuses. Uh, they're probably be reduced anyway when you change the lens because now it senses it has a lens that can do all that. But uh, back into options. Ah, you can turn off the shutter. You can tell it. You can actually zoom in, so you can you can uh, zoom in on like a star say, and then make sure you're. Uh, getting your exposure right and things like that before you take the big picture. Because uh, with a live view, it will do a lot of that live. That's why it's better than an SLR, because in SLR you're looking through. So anything that's a digital element that you're changing, uh, with the mirrorless, you can actually see that on the live view on the uh, EVF as well. That's pretty good. Uh, there's your delay, and you can turn grid mode on. Mirror modes, if you're taking selfies or something, it'll flip it so it looks more normal. That's what you would expect. So yeah, that's pretty much why I just wanted to show the setup really, that it's completely over Wi-Fi now, apart from the focus, but I think there is some emote you can get for that, so you can control it uh, remotely. 
and then you've got the full setup so you can be inside you know your shed or inside your house even as long as you're in the Wi-Fi range uh, of your scope and the, and the a7 camera and you can uh, you can you know take your time a bit more because you can play a bit in the comfort of your own, own uh, place imagine if you're even in the car you could sit in the car and have this all outside if you're on the side of a mountain top and it's really cold or something just about see my surface there and uh, yeah, it's all, it's all a really good setup. It's pretty cool. I'm looking forward to using it. Hopefully, I can upload some good videos of uh, the moon and the rings of Saturn and such. So I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you've got any questions, any recommendations, if you've set if you've set up the Celestron with a PC, I'd be really uh, happy to find out about that because I couldn't find any videos or anything, which was pretty rare. So thanks for watching. Give it a like, subscribe. I want to post loads more on astrophotography as among other things, motorcycle riding and maybe a few games. So okay, bye bye.